The following comes from the pathologist's report of the scene from Paula Lannis. At 12.15 hours upon the above date, I attended a locus on a track off Bridal Way on the A130 near Little White Tiles Farm shop. A Blue F registered Range Rover was parked in front of a gate which was fastened with a chain and heavy metal padlock. The bodies of three adult white men were seated in the car. The driver had a shotgun wound of entry just below the lower fixed point of the right ear and an exit wound through the left eye. A 2.5 cm wide almost transverse shotgun track was evident in the right side of the headrest above his seat. The edges were frayed and the foam filler was exposed. A little blood staining was present under offside front door. The front passenger was seated nearly upright. Shotgun wounds were evident over the right side of his face which rested on his right shoulder. Blood was splattered inside the vehicle and windscreen, mainly on the passenger's side. The rear passenger was leaning to his left with his head resting on the lower edge of the near side rear passenger window which was shattered. Fragments of brain and blood protruded for a shotgun wound over the back of his head and a missile graze ran over the top of his head. Blood drained down the outside of the near side rear door. Three blue shotgun shells lay in a tyre track in the snow alongside the driver's door and some blood was splattered on the snow around the shotgun shells and also over the overhanging foliage. Two blue shotgun shells lay in the snow behind the near side of the car. Deep mud-filled tyre tracks passed under the gate and for about 20 metres beyond it. Beyond that tyre tracks were covered in snow. Small puddles of slightly muddied water showing deep red staining filled the tyre tracks leading from the cog up to the gate and beyond the gate. At 7.15 hours the bodies were removed from the car at South Woodham Ferries Police Station. The front passenger grasped a mobile phone between his legs. Shotgun wounds were identified over the right temple and over the right angle of the jaw. Shotgun damage was evident in the collar of his anorak on the right side and there was heavy blood staining down the right side of the anorak. The rear passenger grasped a mobile phone in his right hand with the strap wrapped round his middle finger. Shotgun wounds were present over the back of his head and the right side of his chest and a missile graze was present over the top of his head. Fragments of glass were present around his left ear. The body of the driver showed a large shotgun wound over the right angle of the jaw with a roughly rectangular scuffed burn over the right side of the neck. A second shotgun wound was identified behind the right ear and an exit wound over the left side of the face. A hole was present in the fur collar of his anorak. Further shotgun shells were recovered from the back of the car near the aluminium strip at the bottom of the offside rear door and in the pocket of the driver's door. The following is a pathologist report of Tony Tucker from Paula Lannis from the 23rd of the 1st, 96. The external examination. The body was that of a middle-aged white male, 180 centimetres in height and of heavy build. There was heavy blood staining around the mouth and nose and fragments of jaw and teeth protruded through the lips. There was bruising around the right eye which had collapsed in. There was also bruising on the left upper and lower eyelids. There was evidence of early putrefactive change and that the tissues and organs were stained by loose red blood cells and showed post-mortem gaseous changes. The deceased was wearing a black hooded anorak with white stripes along the outer aspect of the arms. Shotgun damage was evident in the collar of his anorak and on the right side and there was heavy blood staining down the right side. A fleecy navy blue zip-up jacket, a 1.5 cm diameter hole was present in the edge of the collar and on the right side and a 2 cm diameter hole further in. A white vest, blue denim jeans, a black belt, black socks, black caterpillar boots and a yellow metal stud with a clear stone. A number of injuries were noted about the body as follows. A 3 times 2.7 cm roughly squared shotgun wound of entry over the tight occipital region of the head. A 1.5 cm above the occipital protuberance 
and 5.5 centimeters to the right of the midline. Tears extended from each upper angle. A 1.2 times 2.5 centimeters irregular abrasion around the lower edge contained a number of pellet wounds and a separate pellet wound was situated two millimeters from the right lower angle of the wound. A 3.2 times 2.2 centimeter roughly squared shotgun wound of entry, 2.2 centimeters in front of the right ear. A 1 times 1.5 centimeter roughly squared flame burn was situated over the upper end and a 1 times 2.4 centimeter flame burn under the lower end. Approximately four pellet wounds were identified behind the wound and skin split tears radiated from the front end. A 6 times 2.2 centimeter shotgun wound of entry over the right angle of the jaw, 1.5 centimeters below injury number two. A 1.7 times 1.7 centimeter overall abrasion was present around the upper end. The lower end was ragged and darkly edged. Three pellet injuries were identified in the lower margin. An eight times 1.2 centimeter vertical skin split laceration over the right parietal region, five centimeters behind the upper fixed point of the ear. A 3 times 4 mm pellet wound over the right neck, 4 cm below the lower fixed point of the ear. Three plastic wads were recovered from inside the skull, the right cheek and the mouth. Numerous lead pellets were present under the scalp and in the soft tissues of the head. External examination. There was a small amount of bruising of the scalp. The base and the vault of the skull was extensively fractured. The meninges and dura were extensively lacerated. The right side of the jaw and the tissues of the right side of the face and neck were pulped. There were fractures on the cervical vertebrae on the right side of the neck. A four centimeter transverse laceration two centimeters deep was present over the top of the tongue. The air passages contained a small quantity of blood. There was a large amount of inhaled blood in the lower lobe of each lung. The pericardium was normal. The heart was enlarged to 460 grams mainly due to biventricular thickening and dilatation. The myocardium and valves appeared normal. The coronary arteries showed follic thickening only with minimal aortic atherosclerosis. The stomach contained a small quantity of partially digestive food material within which mushrooms could be identified. The tubular gut was normal. The liver showed post-mortem gaseous changes. The gallbladder, pancreas, spleen and adrenal glands were normal. The kidneys, ureters and bladder were unremarkable. The bladder was empty. Conclusions. The body was that of a middle-aged white male, 180 centimeters in height and of heavy build. The heart was enlarged and the coronary arteries were mildly narrowed, but this did not cause or contribute to his death at this time. Death resulted from shotgun wounds to the head. The shotgun wounds were consistent with the weapon being discharged close to the head. There was no evidence that the victim had attempted to defend himself. Cause of death, in my opinion, the cause of death was shotgun wounds of head. The following is a pathologist report of Pat Tate by Paula Lannis, also from the 23rd of the 1st, 96. The external examination. The body was that of a middle-aged white male, 186 times 5 centimeters in height and of heavy build. The deceased was wearing a black leather jacket, two tiers of 4 centimeters and 6.5 times 1.5 centimeters, 1.2 centimeters apart, were just in front of the right side seam. A grey white woolen sweater. A 9 times 3 centimetre irregular tear was situated in the right side of the sweater. Blue denim jeans. The jeans were heavily blood stained over the outer aspect of the left thigh and leg. Black belt. Multicoloured socks. Black boots. A yellow metal chain around his neck. A clear stone mounted in yellow metal in his left earlobe. The following injuries were noted about the body. A 9 times 1.5 cm missile graze running downwards and to the right over the back of the head, 4 cm above the occipital protuberance. The edges were irregular. The upper left hand edge appeared squared. The lower right hand edge was slightly tampered. 
Four small pellet wounds, each measuring three to four millimetres, were present around the lower right hand end. There was pink staining around the upper left hand half of the wound. The greys did not penetrate the full thickness of the scalp and showed underlying bruising. A nine times seven centimetre shotgun wound of entry of the left occupy region, four centimetres behind the upper fixed point of the ear. A four times four centimetre area of flame burning containing a number of small pellet wounds was present around the lower edge of this injury. The wound track passed slightly forwards and then from left to the right. The brain was extensively lacerated, particularly the left cerebral hemisphere and cerebellum. Plastic wad and numerous lead pellets were recovered from the wound. A six times four centimetre shotgun wound of entry over the right lower rib margin 30 centimetres below the mid axillary point. The edges were irregular, slightly scalped, slightly abraded. A 3 millimetre pellet wound was situated 8 millimetres behind the posterior quadrant at the 8.30 hours position. Small patchy bruises in association with a number of pellets under the skin surrounded in the wound in an area totalling 17 times 10 centimetres. The wound track passed from left to right upwards and slightly forwards. It resulted in fractures to the lower edge of the sixth rib and the seventh to ninth ribs and laceration of the interior aspect of the right lobe of the liver. Plastic wad and numerous lead pellets were lodged under the skin and in the soft tissues over the right chest ward and liver. Bruising and swelling over the right periorbital tissues. A nine centimeter surgical scar over the left anterior iliac crest. A five centimeter scar behind the middle third of the right arm. An 18 centimeter linear scar over the back of the upper two thirds of the right forearm. A 15.5 centimeter linear scar of the back of the lower half of the left thigh. A number of tattoos were present over both arms and forearms and the mid back. Tattoos of swallows were present over the upper chest on each side. The external examination, head and neck. The scalp was bruised, particularly around the shotgun wound. There was commemuted fracture of the base and vault of the skull. The left cerebral hemisphere and cerebrum were extensively lacerated, but otherwise normal. The cerebral vessels were thin walled and clear. The tissues and intrinsic structures of the mouth, pharynx and neck were normal and intact. The air passages contained a small quantity of fresh blood. The lungs were healthy. The pericardium was normal. The heart was enlarged to 460 grams, mainly due to a large ventricular thickening and dilatation. A one centimeter scar was present in the posterior aspect of the left ventricular. The valves were normal. The anterior descending artery showed up to 60% narrowing due to centric atherometers play and to the left circumflex artery showed 40 to 50% narrowing due to concentric plague. The right coronary artery was thin walled and clear. The aorta showed minimal atherosclerotic disease. The stomach was empty. The tubular gut was normal. The anterior aspect of the right lobe of the liver was severely lacerated but otherwise normal. The gallbladder, pancreas, spleen and glands were normal. The kidneys, ureters and bladder were unremarkable. Conclusions The body was that of a middle-aged white male, 186.5 centimetres in height of a muscular build. The heart was enlarged and there was evidence of pre-existing ischemic heart disease and this was, did not cause or contribute to his death. Death resulted from multiple shotgun wounds. The shotgun wound to the left side of the head was consistent with the weapon being discharged close to the skin. The missile graze and shotgun wound to the left chest were consistent with the weapon being discharged near the body. There was no evidence that the victim had attempted to defend himself. Cause of death, in my opinion, the cause of death was multiple shotgun wounds. The following is a pathologist report of Craig Rolfe from the 23rd of the 1st, 96. The external examination. The body was that of an adult white male, 174 centimeters in height and of medium build. 
The deceased was wearing a black anorak with a fur collar. The right side of the collar was scorched and showed a two centimeter hole near the stem of the back. A mustard colored sweater, blue denim jeans, a black belt, white and navy checked boxer shorts, gray socks, brown boots, a yellow metal loop earring in the left earlobe, a watch with a black strap on the left wrist. The following injuries were noted about the body as follows. A 2.2 times 3 cm shotgun wound of entry over the right parietal region of the scalp, 2 cm behind the upper fixed point of the ear and just above it. Tears radiated from the lower artery quadrant. There was a rim of blackening around the upper and posterior edges. Small scuffed abrasions measuring 5 times 7 mm and 4 times 6 mm from above, down and 4 mm apart were situated 0.5 cm in front of the interior edge of the wound. A number of minor scuffed abrasions were present behind the upper half of the right ear. A 6 times 5 cm irregular shotgun wound of entry was situated of the mid brow and top of the nose and involved the left eye which protruded forwards. There was also a 3.4 times 0.7 cm skin split laceration over the outer angle of the left eye. A fragment of plastic ward was recovered from the brain. Numerous lead pellets were present within the brain substance. An 11.8 times 5 cm shotgun wound of entry overlaying the right angle of the jaw. A number of skin split lacerations radiated from the interior and upper edges. Multiple pellet wounds measuring 3 to 4 mm were present around the top and upper half of the interior edge of the wound. A series of scuffed burns in the area measuring 7 times 6 cm and insected by transverse bands of sparring along the skin folds were present under the shotgun wound. There was marked blackening in the lower back edge of the wound. A missile track passed downwards from the right angle of the jaw into the neck. A plastic wad was lodged in the base of the track and numerous pellets were recovered from the wound. A 1 times 0.3 cm healing laceration over the back of the upper segment of the left ring finger. A 1.5 times 2.5 irregular scar over the junction of the upper and middle thirds of the right arm. A 6 times 0.5 scar over the front and upper third of the right forearm. Two linear scars of 9 times 0.5 cm and 8 times 0.5 over the outer aspect of the lower half of the left arm. The former contained approximately 8 healing puncture marks and laterally approximately 5 puncture marks. A number of minor circular scars around the scars over the left arm and also over the antilateral aspect of the left arm. A 6 times 0.5 cm scar over the front of the upper third of the left forearm. A tattoo was present over the outer aspect of the middle third of the right arm. A tattoo reading CR was present over the outer aspect of the tip of the left shoulder. A tattoo reading MUM was present over the right shoulder blade. External examination. There was minimal patchy bruising of the scalp. There was commemuted fracture of the base and vault of the skull. The meninges and brain were extensively lacerated, particularly on the right side. There was extensive disruption of the right jaw and the soft tissues of the right side of the face and neck. There were fractures of the cerebral vertebrae on the right side with retropharyngeal bruising. The air passages contained a large quantity of blood. Inhaled blood was present in the lower lobe of each lung. The pericardium was normal. The heart was enlarged to 460 grams mainly due to the left ventricular thickening and dilatation. The myocardium and valves were normal. The coronary arteries were thin walled and clear. There was minimal aortic atherosclerosis. The stomach contained a moderate quantity of partially digested food material. The tubular gut was normal. The liver was pale. The gallbladder, pancreas, spleen and adrenal glands were normal. The kidneys, ureter and bladder were unremarkable. The bladder contained a large quantity of clear urine. Conclusions. The body was that of an adult white male, 174 centimetres in height and of medium build. The heart was enlarged. 
but this did not cause or contribute to his death at this time. Death resulted from shotgun wounds to his head. Both shotgun wounds were consistent with the weapon being discharged close to the head. There was no evidence that the victim had attempted to defend himself. Cause of death? In my opinion, the cause of death was shotgun wounds of head.